Oh, the ground suddenly collapses under your feet, and all you have time to do is scream. You plummet into the darkness, flailing your arms and legs. Ow! For once, you're in luck. You land on something soft. Clouds of dust kicked up by your fall don't let you see the surroundings. But you can feel your body shaking. Must be the cold and the shock from your sudden fall. After a while, you manage to find your bearings and get to your feet. You switch on the flashlight on your phone and look around. The cave-like room you've ended up in seems to be a deserted lab. You see broken laptops and other equipment, test tubes, cables, and debris. Debris all over the place. You scratch your head trying to figure out what could have happened here. Suddenly, you hear some strange rustling sound. It's coming from the darkest corner of the laboratory. You squeak and nearly jump out of your skin. Whew, just a couple of rats. Nothing too bad compared to what has already happened to you. You can't but recollect your landlord telling you to get out of the apartment you've been renting for more than three years. To be fair though, you indeed hadn't been paying your rent for the last several months. But that's the fault of your boss, who apparently learned a new word. Sorry, we're downsizing, he told you. The man didn't even sound apologetic. So here you are now, no home, no work, all your friends and family far away. Plus, you must have hurt your right leg during the fall. A dark, smelly cave with rats doesn't seem to be the worst of your problems. You sigh and shake your head. First, you need to find a way out, then cry over your misfortune. You carefully move deeper into the lab, trying to ignore the rats. And suddenly, you see it. The thing looks complicated. Unlike the rest of the equipment, it's clean, as if it had been brought here from another place. You come closer and gasp. The mechanism is emitting a buzzing sound. Can it mean it's working? You cautiously touch its surface, ready for an electric shock or even being turned into a frog. But nothing happens. You scoop the thing up and head further. After what feels like hours, you tumble to the ground outside the cave. Luckily, the strange machine looks undamaged. You've got a better chance to examine it in bright sunlight. Your phone still has about 25% battery life. You Google the device you've taken with you. It turns out to be a 3D printer, but much more complicated than the ones you see online. It has tons of different buttons and even several levers. You try to remember what you know about 3D printers. First of all, there must be a 3D model made in a special program. You can either create it from scratch or download whatever you need from a 3D library. After that, you need to slice this 3D model into thousands of layers. You can do that with the help of special slicing software. After the file is sliced, you can send it to the printer via Wi-Fi, SD, or USB. Then it's going to be 3D printed layer by layer. These days, you can use loads of different materials to create the final product. It can be plastic, metal, carbon fiber, resin, paper, graphite, all kinds of powder, you name it. You start to experiment with the buttons on the device's front panel. Very soon, you realize this isn't a usual 3D printer. The thing is much more advanced and complex. It has a little screen. With the help of a lever, you can choose a material you'd like to use. Also, there's a large selection of objects you can print out. You're still exploring the possibilities of your state-of-the-art printer when you accidentally press a light blue button. The device you've been easily holding in your hands starts growing in size. Soon, it's too heavy for you to hold, and you have to put it on the ground. It only stops expanding when it's three times its initial size. Curious. But first things first, your leg still hurts. You must have sprained your ankle. It would be great to give it some support. Why don't you test your device by printing yourself a cast? You choose this option on the screen. The printer buzzes for a second or two, and you notice a leg-sized opening appears in its surface. I have nothing to lose, you think, and you stick your leg into the hole. Several clicking sounds later, your leg starts to warm up. Then, silence. Around your leg, there's something lace-like and thin, but it supports your leg very well and is surprisingly strong. Hmm, one problem solved. You can think about other issues. Like, can your stomach growl even more loudly if you don't feed it right now? You sigh. It's unlikely your printer can help you with this problem. Oh, look! It actually can! You see the word food on the display. The choice isn't very impressive, but pizza sounds just right. You pick pepperoni, and the printer gets down to work. The smell is awesome. The taste is even better. You start thinking your supposedly bad luck is actually very good luck. Now you need some transport to get out of this middle of nowhere. 
One thing you know for sure, a 3D printed car has already been made. It happened in 2015, when the world's first drivable car was printed and assembled live at the North American Auto Show. The vehicle, called the Strati, was made up of 50 parts. At the same time, the average passenger car needs at least 2,000 parts. It took 44 hours to print all the 212 layers to complete the Strati. Your 3D printer needs just a few minutes. The vehicle you've printed out is more of a sleek sports car. Soon, you figure out it can reach astonishing speeds. Even better, you could turn it into a convertible if it wasn't so cold outside. But wait! Surely your 3D printer can help you out. You choose the warmest fabric the device can offer. And soon, wool jacket is covering your upper body. You make a mental list of all the items of clothing you've always wanted to have but didn't have enough money to buy. Finally, you arrive at the piece of land your grandparents left you many years ago. It's been standing abandoned ever since. You've never had enough time or money to build anything there. Well, the time has come. You press the already familiar blue button. The printer starts growing. Soon, it's as large as a three-story building. You choose a design. You've always liked those wooden cabin houses with huge glass windows. It takes the printer no more than 20 minutes to finish your new home. It looks amazing, sturdy and spacious at the same time. Soon, you're already printing out the furniture. That's a good thing your printer has tons of different ideas and designs to offer. With the cabin already, you decide to clean the territory. You haven't been here for a while. That's why there are lots of fallen trees, branches, and other debris lying around. You pick up a large branch only to drop it a second later. It's too heavy. Hmm. You start pacing in front of your house, thinking. An exoskeleton. You'll print yourself an exoskeleton. No sooner said than done. In about 10 minutes, you're 30 times stronger than you used to be. Not even a thick fallen tree is a problem for you. The next day, you print out several robots to help you around the house and in the garden. And you send out invitations to your family and friends. It's time for them to buy airline tickets and visit you in your new home. By the time they all arrive two weeks later, you've already built, actually printed, a large swimming pool. It's surrounded by chase lounges and colorful patio umbrellas. All kinds of robots scurry around, serving food and drinks, everything 3D printed. You only smile enigmatically when your friends ask you when your life took such a sharp turn. One night, you can't fall asleep, buzzing with the excitement of having your dearest and nearest with you. That's when it dawns on you. Why don't you 3D print your 3D printer? A year later, you're the owner of an extremely successful corporation. You build skyscrapers, bridges, and apartment buildings. You produce equipment for factories, hospitals, and construction companies. You have a clothing manufacturing business and a large chain of print-out-your-own-food restaurants. Your next goal? Space exploration, of course! Wouldn't it be cool to build a city on Mars and a couple of theme parks on the moon?